my name is Scott Yang. I'm the Chief Executive of uh, SkillsFuture Singapore. And our job as an agency is to promote lifelong learning uh, among uh, the population. The world of work has changed over the last mm -hmm. few years quite dramatically. Um, what sort of developments have there been in lifelong learning in Singapore? Yeah, well, first of all, I should say that there have been developments uh, all over the world. A couple of my colleagues uh, have just been back from uh, Ireland, looking at uh, SkillsNet Ireland and what they've been doing uh, up there. Well, back to Singapore, uh, I would say, I would summarize what have been happening uh, in this part of the world uh, in three broad points. Okay? The first is that we have, uh, you know, we we're just at the, the conference just now, and uh, one of the conference uh, members, one of the delegates, uh, Anna, was talking about the need to take a systems approach. And in Singapore, what we've been trying to focus on and put a little more emphasis on over the past two years is really to bring in uh, the employers. Uh, we do it uh, by uh, in a number of ways. Uh, over the past two years, we have managed to recruit uh, a fair number of what we call Queen Bee companies, uh, companies who are uh, industry captains in their own right or who have uh, great uh, influence because of their their uh, via their supply chain and we try to try to ask them to help us rally other companies uh, to engage in lifelong learning to engage in employer employee training that is uh, relevant to the context of their work uh, and we have also uh, managed to partner and engage uh, professional bodies and trade associations so that they they may also get their members to be clearer about the skill sets that their workers need the skill sets that their hirees need uh, and this in turn can inform both workers and the training market uh, as to the sort of uh, uh, training and lifelong learning that is most relevant uh, to, to people's employment and to companies uh, needs. So that's the first development. And the second development has to do with the quality of, uh, of, of training and that's important because at the end of the day we can say all we want about training it is the individual experience uh, in the class or doing on-job training uh, that that really informs his view of how uh, lifelong learning can help him uh, practically. Uh, so we have done a couple of things. Uh, we, have, we have really focused on, on, on quality over the past uh, few years. Uh, we have instituted a national uh, uh, sort of uh, national level uh, learner validation system and really uh, it is to take the leaf of the IT industry uh, looking at how users uh, respond uh, to products. And here, the products are, are training, training courses and so on. And really to ask uh, learners, you know, does this, uh, th th did your five day, your three month uh, uh, course in this particular subject, did it help you? Uh, did it allow you to be more confident in, in, in the particular skill you're supposed to, to train in and so on? And how can we improve? Could it be shorter, longer and so on? And really you want to make use of this learner validation to very systematically improve the stock of training courses are uh, 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 going forward. Of course, the other aspect of quality is about uh, is about uh, using technology, uh, blended learning, and in fact, this whole day, uh, this conference will be talking about how we can use uh, AI uh, to improve uh, human human learning. So that's the second uh, uh, that that's, that I think is a second development. And the third development, as uh, you have uh, mentioned, is on the policy front. I think we have. Uh, uh, made quite a decisive move uh, this year uh, to support mid-career research. Um, I wouldn't say older workers because 40 years old is young by my standards. So mid-career risk, right? Uh, uh, we, we, are, we, are, we are giving more support to mid-career risk because we think at that point, uh, you have still quite a while in the workforce, but at the same time, you have left school, you know, formal education also for quite a while. So it's a good point uh, to to do a reinvestment of your of your of your training, so we have uh, launched the my prime minister has launched the uh, skills future level up program, and basically there are two parts to this. The first is an additional four thousand dollars in everyone's uh, 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 training credits. Uh, we'll call skills future credits uh, to allow him to invest in uh, in paying for a training that will lead to employment uh, uh, employment outcomes. Uh, this includes um, getting a full qualification, like a post, like like a like a post dip or or, or degree. Uh, it includes um, uh, being uh, participating in the career transition program. So that's the first element of the level program. The second element is uh, is a training allowance. 
which we will introduce uh, early next year. And, and this training allowance uh, is to uh, take on board um, the difficulties that someone might have when he engages in full-time training. Uh, but because of that, he has to uh, sort of uh, uh, let go a little bit of uh, income opportunities. So at that point, when you're 40 years old, you have family commitments, you, have, uh, you, know, you may have a home loan, etc. And, and so what we want to do is to make that, that barrier to training or to full-time training a little bit more uh, easy for individuals to cross over, for the mid-careers to cross over. So we'll introduce a training allowance for full-time training uh, starting early next year. So th those are the three developments, all very exciting developments, uh, kept us busy uh, these two years and will keep us busy for the next. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, this conference is all around AI and lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's great to have perspectives all across the world with this actually, it's a absolutely, really great conference. Um, so thinking of AI mm. and the way that work is changing with generative AI and the way AI mm. is incorporating, what particularly are you sort of um, taking away from that on, for Singapore and how are you adapting like lifelong learning with, with AI and the changing world of work? Mm. That, that's, a, that's a great question and, and a really difficult question because it would seem that um, how industry is responding to the technology has not quite settled. That's number one. And how, you know, how the technology is going, uh, that itself is also uh, is also not quite quite open. The answer is also quite uh, open ended. Now, what I would say is that as a general purpose tool, um, AI, you know, in its latest incarnation, Gen AI, will affect many sectors. And because it affects many sectors, there's a primary impact. And after that, because sectors sectors don't transform in isolation uh, they affect one another so there'll be a primary effect and then a second secondary effect uh, there'll be uh, you know the, the changes will come i think significantly faster than what we have been used to in terms of uh, jobs and tasks churning uh, in even sectors uh, uh, churning uh, and so on so one key response is to have a workforce that's more mobile more adaptable people who learn, who has experience for 10, 15, 20 years in a particular area, uh, journalism, uh, being able to take some of these skills, some of this experience and have it recognized and have it uh, being used in another sector. Just pure uh, uh, versatility and mobility of the workforce uh, is important uh, in this environment. So that, that's, that's, that I think is the first point. I think the second point is, uh, you know, the, the sort of no-brainer thing is that all sectors, almost all occupations, have to learn uh, to work with digital tools uh, better. Um, this does not necessarily mean that everybody needs to be an expert coder, although coding would help, uh, knowing how to code and script would help. Uh, but it, it means uh, also that uh, you understand uh, your domain enough uh, to know how then can digital tools be applied to give you an advantage. Uh, you understand uh, uh, also the risks uh, and the limitations involved in using the, the digital tool, whether it's ChatGPT or something more uh, specific to the sector, uh, in using that, 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 that tool. And I think those will be the, the key skills, the key uh, uh, competencies, uh, both at the enterprise level and the individual level. Uh, we're talking here as well around productivity, aren't we? And mm -hmm. like, um, Singapore is known globally to be a productivity powerhouse, which is always um, good to be able to, to come here and, and see what you um, guys are, are doing. Um, how can you see lifelong learning, AI, and productivity sort of coming together? One of the uh, concepts of productivity that we are, as, as, as a, as a upskilling agency we are most uh, interested in is, is, is lifelong productivity. So it's not about productivity of you at this current job, although that is important to your employer, uh, to be sure. But it is about that lifelong productivity, the, the, your relevance or my relevance uh, to the workplace, to a certain profession, to be valuable uh, to society and the economy, you know, at 40, at 50, at 60, and so on. And, and this is, this is, this is the, I think AI uh, creates a certain level of uh, challenge and also creates a certain level of opportunity in terms of maximizing lifelong 
uh, productivity of the individual. So the level of challenge, of course, is that the skills that you know today um, may become redundant faster. They pick up new skills. So that's a challenge uh, that's addressed with upskilling. Uh, but I think also there is a, there are opportunities because it it allows um, uh, the use of bots, drones, uh, automation, and so on. Does allow individuals to be in the workplace uh, for longer, particularly if that job requires a certain um, uh, physical exertion. So, so, so there is a uh, hope, and and I think it is it is it is eminently uh, valuable to drive technology development in that direction uh, to allow all of us as individuals to stay in the workplace and be valuable contributors for as long as you can and improve lifelong productivity. And what skills in particular are you looking to develop for for all age really around lifelong learning? Mm -hmm. So those that are coming into the workforce but those which um, need to upskill and reskill. What are those sort of core AI skills or what the conference has been calling a lot around AI literacy, like what yeah. are the sort of key areas that you're looking at? Yeah, so first there are some, I think the conference talked about it as well, there are some skills uh, that has to do with uh, uh, maybe change management, uh, ability to collaborate and so on. That's not AI skills per se, it's not, not technical per se, uh, but it is. Uh, it remains important. In fact, uh, in the time of change, it remains, uh, it, it's probably even more important to have the ability to communicate across different uh, uh, experts uh, to be able to look at uh, 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 changes and uh, look at risks and opportunities and so on and to lead your company uh, to lead your your unit and so on uh, to navigate those changes those those are those are those are important skills now even now and will become more important uh, going forward uh, so that's 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 um, that's the first point I want to make but to your point uh, directly uh, we think a certain level of uh, digital and AI literacy uh, is important. Uh, the first is contextual. Uh, in your sector, what are the key AI tools that will help you uh, uh, get your do get your job done better? Uh, uh, how 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 do you then contextualize your own human input vis-a-vis -vis those uh, AI tools? Uh, secondly, um, as I've mentioned, an understanding of the risks and limitations of using that AI. Um, would there be intellectual property concerns? Uh, would you get a company in trouble for breaching those concerns? Uh, would there is, is the data sound? Uh, are you imputing biases that you don't know? Uh, uh, and fundamentally, is is the product good? You can you can use a, an AI to generate um, an image or video, but does it sell stuff? Uh, is is it good for for marketing? Uh, that requires, I think, for now, a human discernment. Uh, still, uh, so that's the part that uh, uh, that comes alongside uh, a, a sort of an understanding and an appreciation of, uh, of of AI, of the use of the AI tools, the more digital aspects. And there's a lot of talk of AI augmentation or AI working alongside mm -hmm. humans, cobots, as you said. And mm -hmm. um, thinking of lifelong learning. Um, there's some bits in there which are really exciting and that can take away um, certain things and people's roles and jobs. But as you said, we need to have discernment with some things which are not quite so as exciting or borderline scary. What are you sort of thinking for the future of AI augmentation and lifelong learning and, and where are you sort of trying to, to drive things forward? Because it's very difficult with fast moving, but you've got to be planning for skills five, ten years away with a an industry that's moving so fast is not an enviable task. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think the the first uh, I think that the the most uh, and this this might this might sound like a like a extremely simple simplified answer, but I think uh, collaboration and and, and discussion, uh, particularly across the uh, the the tri tripartite parties of our workers unions employers and government uh, is, is key. I think in a, in a sort of fast-moving, fluid uh, environment, uh, it is important to be able to understand what's happening on the ground uh, from all perspectives uh, very fast. Um, the second point is that uh, it is more a supply-side kind of point, is that within uh, institutions, uh, our universities and polytechnics, uh, the ability to respond and academic institutions uh, have a mixed record on that. You know, they have their 
they have their academic processes to get a new course up. It takes quite a while for, for good reason for, 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 for rigor and so on. But within that well-established process, uh, academic institutions, uh, if they want to uh, really be valuable in this sort of fast-churning world, will have to also be able uh, to change and respond fast, to make use of uh, digital and blended learning, to change the content of what they teach to be current uh, and to be prepared to keep changing.